the God of the Bible. Really be Satan? Have you and I, all these generations, been worshipping a false god, believing him to be the true god? First and foremost, let me give all credits to Billy Carson Forbidden Knowledge, where I got my inspiration and some content from. I am not in any way affiliated with Bill Carson, just a supporter, as far back when he appeared on TV original Gaia. Others are also giving fascinating discussions, as well as video on this same question, such as a video called Unmasking the Truth Behind the Lies of the Church by Anunnaki Ancient Mystery. The narrator states, this video is not just a critique of religious texts, but an invitation to embark on a journey of discovery. It beckons viewers to question, to seek, and to understand the intricate web of history, faith, and truth. Through meticulous research and compelling narration, the video offers a fresh perspective on age-old beliefs, urging viewers to see beyond the familiar and venture into the realm of the unknown. This is also my contention. This discussion is for mature audience, and those who disagree and are okay with taking your blue pill and continuing down the yellow brick road, I say, go in peace. For the rest of us who would take the red pill, and ask questions about major gaps, and missing links in our existence, this is you. After this, I make no further apologies of what will be said or discussed here. Now, let's get into it. The presence of evil in this world surprises a lot of people. Do you ever question why there is such suffering and pain if God is good, good or even exists? Why do bad things keep happening to good people? in spite of efforts to be a good person and work hard. Have you ever wondered why the so-called others seem to be living their best life, luck follows them, they seem to understand the laws of attraction and everything seems to go their way? While those who follow the words in the Bible live out their lives in constant troubles, poverty, struggle and strife, do you ask God in prayer to deliver you from evils and ask for help against the enemy, yet there is never a real answer or resolution? Why are all your prayers falling on deaf ears? I know you've asked these questions, some probably daily and yet you never stop to really consider. Maybe, just maybe all these years, I have been listening to the false teachings of those in dark power. There is a spiritual war happening my family. A war for our souls. War is not pretty, not just or fair. When you look at our worlds and the church, doesn't it seem more that the powers ruling this earth are dark? Of course it is, are you not therefore following the dark's order? Of course you are, but God is still omnipotent and loving, however, Satan's time is very near now, and he is snatching as many as he can before his time is ended. I know that it is hard to wake up and realize that you have been hoodwinked, lighter to for all of your life. Harder yet, to admit it and go about relearning the truth. Your higher self within you knows this and that is what you experience when you hear something that does not resonate within your spirit, that nagging feeling. Yet most will dismiss that inner voice and continue accepting the false teaching, perhaps out of fear, ego, or laziness. You are given free will, and have the choice to seek the truth or to continue down the road you are on. Just remember my beloved, you will be held accountable. God will not intervene in your choices. 
Knowledge is everywhere now. Right at our fingertips for most. Dot now attainable, which was once hidden. Have you read about the biblical stories? This one in particular stands out to me. The story about Emperor, Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus of ancient Rome, fifth and last of the Julia Claudian dynasty, 37 to 68, the arrogant ruler who had the Christians eaten alive in the games inside the Colosseum? We do know that Nero did attempt to wipe out the Christians for their pagan practices and idolatry worship. Supposedly, Nero released huge hungry lions on the Christians in a Colosseum arena, while asking, where is your god now? If he is a true god, then let him save you and deliver you from these beasts. The Christians were waiting for some sign, but there was none, and man woman and child were ripped apart and devoured by why starving huge lions. These Christians only needed to denounce the name of their Lord and Savior and their lives would be spared, according to the King. Had they done so, while still knowing consciously, who their allegiance and faith belonged to, they could have lived to do the work of their calling. But all perished where their assignment on earth, went you and fulfilled. Some would argue, that perhaps their God wanted to test their faith. I say, as we know, we are tested daily aren't we? But what good is faith, if you are no longer here to perform deeds that your faith, your faith has raised you from? What kind of God, would permit his own believing faithful children to be crushed by the wicked? You as a parent, would never allow someone to abuse, suffer, or torment your children. Right? Those who have, have lost the respect and love from that child and their obedience. So, isn't it fair to say that being under the rule of such a god, one would also have every reason to denounce and distrust such a deity? Another event disturbed me, that of the beautiful souls embodied by all the thousands of monks who were loving and so peaceful, shining their light for an appointed time, but then all killed by the Chinese army. Their lives and death albeit were sign and messages, my mind can't yet comprehend how their death can further the work. If they no longer rear here in this dimension to continue, Perhaps there is a profound message in this sea for those who have attained that level of enlightenment. I guess I haven't as of yet. Let's discuss these topics in depth. The question of why the wicked prosper, even when they do not follow the ways of God, and are not in the positive flow or vibrations of life has been a source of deep contemplation for many prophets and religious figures. Jeremiah, for example, asked the Lord why the faithless live in ease and why the wicked prosper even when they speak of God but do not follow him. Similarly, Job wondered why the wicked continue to thrive and gain power even in their old age. The psalmist also expressed envy when he saw the prosperity of the wicked, questioning if living righteously was worth the trouble. This raises the question of how a loving God can allow his people to suffer while the wicked continue to flourish. You've probably gotten that question a million times, why do good people suffer in this world? Well. To tell you the truth, that also is what disturbs me to no end, all the prestige, power, pleasure and downright prosperity that goes to the wicked, evil, mean and dark spirited of this planet. I have heard various explanations, but none of them have satis satisfied me. 
It said that Satan's rebellion is being used by God to expose the hearts of both men and women. Those who trust in God's atonement will be raised from the dead and spend all of eternity with him. Someone suggested that perhaps the reason for his dark ones, or those under his influences, excessive flamboyant lifestyle is to escape from the nagging guilt that prevents him from living a normal life. Another person proposed that he could secretly be performing charitable acts for the less fortunate. Lastly, someone advised me to consider the overall outcome, where the higher conscious people will eventually receive their rewards, while the low vibrating dark people will face severe consequences. Consider the big picture. They say, all of the good guys will be rewarded in the end. However, the bad guys will get it, in the end, and they will get it hard. None of these explanations are convincing for me. This life is a game, and to me, if someone breaks the rules of the game and causes harm to others, should not they be dealt with or leave immediately? What are all these dark ones doing in God's world if this world is the work of a God who desires goodness and kindness? A truly good God would not put up with evil people, right? So, who rules this world? Satan or God? According to the Bible, even though God gave Adam dominion over the world, Adam ultimately turned it over to Satan. Yes, Satan, Satan is the transient ruler of this world. Read these verses yourself. For hundreds of years, the Bible has served as a source of comfort, hope, and inspiration for many of the world's religions. However, if the Bible were made into a film, it might receive an orating for infanticide, rape, murder, and incest. These are all mentioned in the chapters. Even in the absence of violence, there are numerous ugly passages, such as the unforgiving deaths of malnutrition or death from, from excruciatingly long illnesses. Furthermore, the number of individuals documented as having been slain in the text is rather large, whether or not immediately with the help of God, people acting on God's orders, or humans responding to God's orders. Any prophet who claims to proclaim in my name or in the name of another God anything I have not instructed is to be executed. Deuteronomy 28 verse 29 You will scurry around like a blind person in the dark at noon. You will fail at everything you try, and no one will come to your aid, while you are subjected to daily exploitation and robbery. Judges 21 verse 10 so the assembly sent 12,000 of their best warriors to Jabesh Gilead with orders to kill everyone there, tilde including women and children. These statements sound more like the evil entity known as Yahweh or Satan, don't they? The majority of other cultures and religions depict an evil being wreaking havoc and battling the forces of good. The devil, like the devil in Christianity, is thought to have rebelled against God. Those who follow the gospel have had their minds blinded by Satan, the god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 The mighty powers in this dark world and evil spiritual rulers and authorities are who we are fighting against not flesh and blood adversaries. Epiphany 6.12 We are aware that the evil one is in charge of the environment around us. 1 John 5 verse 19 
the Bible claims, who can prevail in this conflict with the world. Only those who accept Jesus as the only begotten Son of God. 1 John 5 verse 5 Although the devil appears in many faiths and is comparable to certain legendary gods, he is arguably most recognized for his position in Christianity. Most other cultures and religions depict evil beings roaming the earth, wreaking havoc and fighting the forces of good, just as the devil, in Christianity. In Ju Judaism, the word Satan is a verb, usually not a physical entity, but refers to a temptation that must be overcome. In Buddhism, Mara is the demon who kept the Buddha from the path to enlightenment. And other names for the devil include Moloch, the Prince of Darkness, the Lord of the Flies, the Antichrist, and Father of Lie, and so on. The book of Ezekiel contains a verse that Christian cite as evidence for the devil's existence. In modern Bible translations, the devil is referred to as the enemy of both God and God's people. Many Christians believe that the devil was once the lovely angel Lucifer, who disobeyed God and fell from favor. This notion that he is a fallen angel is typically based on the passage, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the dawn? How have you been reduced because you have weakened the nations? According to some biblical scholars, the name Lucifer is more of a definition or descriptive term that signifies morning star than it is a real name. However, the moniker persisted. I urge you to delve into this matter yourself, who or what is Lucifer, really? Begin piecing facts together, I promise you, it will begin to finally make sense. Just look at our society, our world. The God governing this world is the father of lies. Do you really need any more proof? This world only provides a lust for sensual pleasure, a lust for everything we see and pride in our accomplishments and possessions. Competing, and separation. These things are from the world, not the Father, and as everyone's desires fade away, so does this world. Those who follow God's will, on the other hand, live forever. 1 John 2 verses 16-17 the concept of Satan's authority on earth is a complex topic that has been discussed and debated for centuries. Accord according to the Bible, Satan was granted authority over the earth when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. Since then, the world has been under his influence and control. As a result, the world's systems and values are often at odds with God's wisdom and teachings. Believers who are guided by God's wisdom often find themselves at odds with the world around them. The Bible tells us that God's wisdom is often seen as foolishness to the world. This is because God's ways are fundamentally different from the ways of the world. Christians are called to resist the pull of the world and its values. This means avoiding anything that is contrary to God's will and purpose. The Bible warns against being friends with the world because it is at odds with God's kingdom. By seeking the approval of the world, one risks becoming enemies of God. Instead, you are called to love God and prioritize His will above everything else. This means rejecting the world's ways and embracing God's. Wisdom, even if it means going against the grain of popular opinion. Daniel 8:24. His power will be great.
but it will not be his own. He will cause terrible destruction and succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy the mighty men along with the holy people. Daniel 8 verse 25 Through his craft and by his hand, he will cause deceit to prosper, and in his own mind he will make himself great. In a time of peace he will destroy many, and he will even stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be broken off, but not by human hands. Jesus declared, the world's ruler, Satan, will be banished, John, tw John 12 verse 31. Bible foretells Satan's demise. The devil was cast into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. They will be tortured there for all eternity, day and night. Since we're on the side of the light, and I am assuming those listening to this and asking the question of whether the God of the Bible is truly Satan, are those seeking the light? Then I tell you. It's up to us, to reclaim our freedom, heritage and authority. The true Christ, told us to, above all, get ye understanding. It is incumbent upon every man and woman. Don't just follow anyone or any teaching without researching as to where it is coming from and its truth. You will be held accountable for the lack of understanding you agreed to even though you worship devoutly. It was a false teaching, it's your responsibility to know. Most Christians follow blindly, without questions because those in power and control of the truth benefit from your lack of understanding. They will say to you that, you must accept the word without question, to believe in faith, to question is blasphemy, but that is not what Christ said, is it? Remember, he told us to get ye understanding. The truth shall set ye free. It is clear. Researching and study is not for the faint at heart, it takes a lot of effort, time, struggle, etc but it is for your evolution of spirit or soul. One can take the lazy path of least resistance and, instead simply follow the elected false ministers, preachers and popes, and do so in your own demise. You have been warned of this. This is not to put fear into you. That's their position. I want you to think, do you really believe that a true loving God of light and power would sit back and torture his followers and cause them suffering, pain, and lack because he can? Who himself tells us, thou shalt not kill? Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. Genesis 9 verse 6 so, I end here, this video's purpose is simply to provoke thought, and discernment, something the God within you possess, I pray that you will delve deeper, consider and research for yourselves. Don't take my words or anyone's words, without doing your own due diligence. It is encumbering upon each and every one of us, to seek understanding. Your soul's ascension depends on it. Let those who have eyes see, and those who have ears, hear and understand. Much love to you all, I appreciate your watching.